Reproduction is one of the characteristics of life. Even though a functional reproductive system is not a system that is essential for the continued survival of the individual, it is required for the continued survival of the species. That is because organisms need to replace themselves with the next generation. This reproduction could occur with genetic recombination, resulting in genetically distinct offspring. This is called sexual reproduction. Or the reproduction could result in offspring genetically identical to the parent and each other, asexual reproduction. Certain organisms are able to reproduce both sexually and asexually, while some are restricted to only one method or another. We will start by discussing methods of asexual reproduction. In this form of reproduction, all offspring are genetically identical to each other and to the original parent. Prokaryotic organisms all reproduce asexually. Since prokaryotic cells are the simplest cells, they also have the simplest cell division, known as binary fission. And since these organisms are usually unicellular, when they divide, they have also reproduced. This division requires the copying of the genetic material and the division of that material along with the cytoplasm. Unicellular organisms are not the only ones which are able to reproduce asexually. Some multicellular organisms can also reproduce asexually. In this case, we will be looking at sea anemones. Some of them reproduce in a manner that is similar to cell division, but for a multicellular organism. This is known as fission. It is similar to cell division, but instead of one cell dividing, the entire multicellular organism divides into two smaller ones. Another way in which multicellular organisms can reproduce asexually is through fragmentation followed by regeneration. I once saw a picture of a sea star with one very large leg and four short ones. I was wondering why that one leg grew so large, but then I realized what had happened was that a much larger sea star lost a leg due to an injury, and that severed leg was able to regenerate the missing parts of the body that were not a part of the leg. The original parent was also able to replace that leg that it had lost. And now we have two individuals which are genetically identical to each other. Fragmentation is the breaking of the parent body into several pieces, which by itself is not reproduction, but if at least two of those fragments are able to regenerate into complete individuals, then reproduction has occurred. Humans do not have this extreme of a regenerative ability. Severed limbs do not start growing into complete individuals, but we are still able to heal a wide variety of injuries to our body. The next type of asexual reproduction, which some multicellular organisms are capable of, is known as budding. In this form of reproduction, body cells of the individual begin dividing and forming a new, smaller individual, still attached to the first. This new, smaller individual is genetically identical to the larger one and will grow while still attached to the larger one, until it is large enough to separate and live on its own. While there are advantages to asexual reproduction, such as being able to multiply quickly and reproduce even when isolated from other individuals of the same species, the biggest disadvantage is that a population that is produced exclusively through asexual reproduction would be genetically uniform meaning that the entire population may be susceptible to extinction from a slight change in environmental conditions, or even a single infectious disease being spread. Genetic recombination and variability causes populations to be more successful, even in the face of changing conditions. Sexual reproduction always involves the fusion of haploid gametes. These gametes, or sex cells, are usually quite different in size, but they have the same amount of genetic material. Since these gametes are haploid, they have only one chromosome of each pair. Yet when the gametes fuse, the result is a zygote, or fertilized egg. 
the zygote is diploid, meaning that it has two copies of each chromosome, one from each gamete. That zygote will divide many times to form a multicellular diploid offspring, which will be genetically distinct from the parents and from other siblings formed by the fusion of a different set of gametes. The source of these gametes are normally from a male and a female of the species. But there are certain types of organisms which are hermaphrodites and able to produce both male and female gametes. The location of this fertilization event will also be different depending on the types of organisms. Some organisms have external fertilization, meaning that both the male and female gametes are released into the environment, and the fertilization, along with subsequent embryonic development, occurs in the environment, external from either parent. This contrasts with internal fertilization, where the fertilization occurs within the female's reproductive system and at least some steps of embryonic development occur internally. Now some animals will then lay eggs which have been fertilized containing the developing embryos, while other individuals, the entirety of embryonic development occurs within the female's reproductive tract. Now that we have discussed the different methods of reproduction, let's answer some questions. Which form of reproduction would be considered sexual reproduction? Is that binary fission, fragmentation and regeneration, gamete fusion, or budding? Asexual reproduction results in offspring that are unrelated to the parents, similar but not genetically identical to the parents, genetically identical to the parents. Since birds lay eggs, they have external fertilization. True or false?